Next morning, you want to start out with a good breakfast to provide lots of energy to get you through another busy day. Now, your hotel might have a dining room, and that would certainly be a convenient place to have breakfast, but there's a lot of nice little restaurants in town that are worth considering. Start out with uh, New Mexican-style breakfast, perhaps mm -hmm. some chili, a burrito, maybe a taco, all sorts of terrific Mexican foods here, of course, in Santa Fe. One of the most popular spots in town is Cafe Pascual's. They line up outside the door waiting to get into Pascual's and you'll see why. It's a really friendly, homey, family kind of place. You can sit at a big communal table or sit at a smaller tusum and enjoy this fabulous food. New Mexican style, you'll get the burritos, the wraps, the different kinds of chilies to go with it perhaps. Or of course you can have your food mild if you don't want to burn your tongue. They'll accommodate you no matter what's your choice. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's busy all day. <laughs> Friendly place, the tables are quite close so you get a chance to chat with your neighbors if you're so inclined. A lot of friendships are struck up here at Cafe Pascual's. Very good service. The restaurant is not too huge that you get lost in the crowd. So they take very good care of you with some high quality food. There are several nice excursions that you can enjoy out from Santa Fe. One of the most interesting is to Bandelier National Monument. This is a national park about one hour's drive. It's 48 miles to the northwest of Santa Fe. And there's this rugged scenery along the way. Bandelier National Monument is the site of an ancient Pueblo culture. And there are some very interesting historic remains here. As you'll see, they built their homes right up against the face of the cliff and actually used some of the caves in the cliff for their dwellings yeah, yeah. to supplement their houses. Yeah. It's quite an ingenious system. And you can learn all about it on a free guided walking tour provided by the Park Service. Some of those caves are natural, but some of them were actually carved into the cliff by the Indian residents. There might have been a small cave that was then enlarged with just the use of stone tools and all incorporated into this long complex of homes along the foot of the cliff. It would have been well protected here and built up much more than what we see today. Today is just the ruins of what had been a thriving society. Pueblo housing like this is very similar to our modern apartment building, where you have a whole bunch of units all connected together and built one on top of the other. In this case, it might have been as much as five stories high with perhaps 500 people living in one complex. And then they had their church. It's a kiva. This is where the special ceremonial rituals would take place. Nice view of the cliff and the Pueblo complex. Notice how they would grind the corn. Well, this is called a matate. And this is called a mano. And all it is is a matter of providing pressure. And 
grinding the corn back and forth. Corn was the main food of the ancient people who lived here, supplemented by beans and squash, all of which they grew here in the canyon floor. This Bandelier National Monument is really quite something. We've got the ancient Indian ruins from the Anasazi, and then there's a nature trail covered with snow. It's actually not a very cold day today. It's a beautiful, clear, sunny day. It's probably about 35, 40 degrees. No wind. That's pretty pleasant, but there's still snow on the ground. The residents lived here in harmony with nature for many centuries. And you can see from this natural beauty how pleasant it must have been. We're enjoying winter at its very best here where it's just cold enough for some ice and a little bit of snow, but actually warm and sunny. So it's very comfortable, about 30 degrees, maybe a little bit more. And of course, there's a park headquarters where they've got a very informative bookshop and gift store. And there's some park rangers on duty to answer your questions. It's really a great experience to go on out to the Bandelier National Monument. And then in less than an hour's drive, you're back in Santa Fe. We're driving along Canyon Road, which is one of the famous spots in town for strip of art galleries. You could walk it or you could take a drive and enjoy these interesting whimsical displays out in some of their front yards. You'll find a variety of sculpture as well as paintings and of course jewelry here, Navajo rugs. It's a friendly place. Well, let's take another look at the art gallery scene in Santa Fe. It's really one of the main activities of the visitors is to come browse in all these different galleries. Whether you're purchasing anything or not, it's still fun to have a look and have a chat with the gallery representative. And you might find yourself the surprise owner of a beautiful new work of art. There's also some lovely furniture stores and interior design shops in Santa Fe. And there's a world-class museum. This was founded in 1917 and built in the Pueblo style. It's the Museum of Fine Arts. It was one of the first buildings constructed in the Pueblo revival style. And they really have an important display. Their permanent collection has a lot of traditional arts and they always have various special exhibits with contemporary art as well. Let's listen to a holiday concert for a minute performed by some local students. Well, our visit to Santa Fe is drawing to a close, but the program's not over yet. We're just halfway through. We'll be taking you shortly up north to Taos, another beautiful town in New Mexico. Hope you've enjoyed these highlights of the great city of Santa Fe, the capital of New Mexico. It has an amazingly proud history and a thriving contemporary scene. Some more views of the city at twilight with the distinctive luminaria lights that you find throughout the Southwest during the Christmas holiday season. It really adds a special touch to these beautiful buildings. And there are many fine restaurants and bars. This is the musical bar inside the Hotel La Fonda. Another view of the Hotel Laredo with its distinctive Adobe style architecture. 
outlined by Luminaria. You'll never run out of fine places to dine here. Maybe check with your hotel desk and see what they recommend. And we're checking with our hotel expert for some Taos tips. We're visiting Taos, New Mexico in the winter. In fact, today is December 21st, the winter solstice, the official beginning of winter. And what more exciting way to greet winter than with a little mild snow flurry. And it's really not bitter cold right now. It's about 25 degrees and there's no wind. So it's really quite comfortable with a sweater and a jacket and a scarf, no problem. Taos is great in the winter or in the summer, anytime because Taos is a very special place. Taos has got a culture of Native American Indian mixed with the Mexican Latino, mixed with the Anglo, and then throw in some tourists to boot. So you have a tremendous variety of cultures here in Taos. There's a lot of gift shops, of course. Obviously, it's wonderful for shopping. And there's a lot of historic sites to see. There's Taos Pueblo. This is a remarkable structure it was originally built, it's believed, around the year 1450, and, and that's 150 years before the Spanish got here. They've maintained their culture right up through the 20th century and into the 21st century. The architecture of Taos is one of its really fine points. It's all based on the Pueblo style, the adobe mud brick building, as you can see behind me there. and. There's a zoning code that requires this historic center to be maintained in this old Pueblo style. And it's felt that the architecture of the Pueblo really began here in Taos with that Taos Pueblo. Taos is a much smaller place than Santa Fe and the main heart of town is centered here at the plaza very historic site with the old adobe style buildings around the plaza. Have a nice variety of shops here. There's a nice hotel right on the main square. Hiking and camping are very popular in the surrounding areas and you can pick up some very good equipment right here. Get some nice native Indian blankets, some hanging, some pillows, and just enjoy the tranquil serenity of the plaza. Another way to get tranquil is to go to a wine tasting right in this very friendly wine shop on the plaza. You might be surprised to hear that, yes, they do make wine in New Mexico. This is from a native grape that's grown in some of the higher elevations. And it's all New Mexico wine in that shop in the plaza. And like Santa Fe, there's a nice variety of art galleries here and other kinds of souvenir shops where you can pick up some real good quality artifacts and reproductions. Here are some Kachina dolls. These are very important to the native Hopi tribe in the surrounding areas. And of course you have a very nice variety of contemporary art here as well. And some Navajo items. There's ceramics. You can buy a drum. You can buy some native Indian type clothing or contemporary fashions if you like. They've got a lot of interesting architecture to appreciate while you're in Taos again of that Pueblo adobe style. It really makes a treat for the eyes especially in this neighborhood right around the plaza. And during the week before Christmas you get a very special bonus here in the plaza because they've got real authentic luminaria. 
This is paper bags with actual candles inside. It's a community effort where the whole family participates and it can be a little tricky to put the candle in there and not get burned. <laughs> but they learn and it's a real tradition that's been handed down through the generations. And the center of it all is a beautiful Christmas tree. Wonderful lighting all around the buildings of the plaza. This is certainly a charming and magical place to be in the week before Christmas. Enjoying the entertainment in the lounge at the Taos Inn, right in the heart of town. It's fascinating, they just turned their hotel lobby into a bar and lounge in the evening, serving meals or light snacks or just drinks from the bar, and with this terrific live music to go with it. Makes a lovely way to end the day at the Adobe Bar in the Taos Inn. Next morning, we look out the window and we see that it's snowing. How exciting. In the days just before Christmas, to have the snowfall coming down is just a perfect blessing. It's nice and cozy and warm inside the hotel and they have a restaurant so we can have our breakfast right under the same roof. That's very convenient. And then step outside and take a walk in the snow. This is a rare treat that we don't get to enjoy very often. So it's fun to take advantage of it and then hop in the car and take a drive up into ski country. There's an excellent ski resort just outside of town in the Taos Ski Valley. And we're heading up there even though we're novices. We like to go and check it out. You park your car and then they have a shuttle service that brings you right over to the lodge area where you can rent your equipment if you need, check in with the facilities, scope out the slopes, and get ready to go. They have a world famous ski school that will get you up and running even if you've never skied before. And if you're an expert, they have steep slopes for you to conquer. It's a combination of a variety of terrains. They've got chutes and bowls and bumps and glades, lots of moguls. They have more snow than Aspen, they claim, 312 inches per year on the average. They have a bigger vertical drop than Breckenridge, 2,600 feet. More sun than Sun Valley, 88% sunny conditions. The mountain peak is 12,451 feet high and the lift actually takes you up to 12,000 foot elevation and you ski all the way down to the base elevation of about 9,000 feet so it's really quite a vertical drop. There are 72 different runs here half of them are for experts the other half are for beginners and intermediate skiers they have a total of 12 lifts, 4 quad lifts, 1 triple lift they have snow making machines when nature hasn't done enough but here today there were ideal conditions. We had so much fun we went back a second day and hope to get back again in the near future. It's time to leave the slopes though and head on to our next adventure as the sun settles in the horizon. It's the end of another wonderful day and looking forward to more adventures tomorrow. The rooms at the Taos Inn have their own private fireplaces so you can cozy up and get warm, enjoy the sights and fragrance of an open fire hearth right in your room. <laughs>